Hey guys, it's Sonia. How are ya? What are you doing? I thought, let's do a live vlog tonight. I'm back in Pennsylvania. Last night on my daily vlog, I was in Northern North Carolina about to cross over the state line. All the states that we drove through last night, it feels like when you, you ever just like do something and look back and go, man, that feels like a lifetime ago. We got home this morning at 2.30 a.m. We were welcomed by snow and ice and a snow plow, like a welcome wagon in the front of us. So we got through it at uh, 2.30 last night, and uh, but we did, like I said, hit a plow. The speed limits were lowered here as we got closer to where we live. It was so hard coming up from Florida and being like, oh my gosh, is this really what we're going back to? Matt, turn around the car now. Hi, Lisa, how are you? So it was good though to get back home this morning. Oh my goodness. Hey, Chrissy, how are you? Missed you in all this snow. Hey, Kim, how are you, Teresa? Yeah, I'm glad I, I'm home too. Linda's on here, Chris, Stacy, hi. There is nothing like coming back uh, to your house though, right? Like it's nice to get away and that's pretty much what we do. You know, as our business right now is really in a growth stage and we're very, we're kept very, very busy, very productive and just have a lot of plates spinning in the air. Um, for us, we do a lot of smaller getaways. Would I have loved to have stayed down there for two weeks straight? Yes, I would have, but you know, to leave on a Thursday night and come back on a Monday morning, 2.30 in the morning, it's all good, right? I am thankful for that. But going away and then coming back, it really makes you appreciate your own bed. Anybody else know what I'm talking about? Like, oh, nice to get away, but I miss the smell of my home. I miss the comfort, you know, you just miss your own blankets. I miss my own coffee. <laughs> Not the same. Cat says it's snowing in Denver. Yeah, there's snow on the ground here. Yep, nice to get away and it's great to come back home, right? It's, it's, it's where you are. You get to be who you are yourself within your four walls on this earth and yeah, it's just your space, right? So today I'm just unpacking a little bit as well. And um, so yeah, I thought, you know what, why not do the live today with a little bit of what I found when I was in Florida. So I did get to hit two thrifting places when I was down there. And one of the biggest questions I had was, because I'd never gone thrifting in Florida ever, is what would I find and what would it be? Hey, Trudy from Pittsburgh, how are you? Very nice to see you on here. So um, went down there and I'd never been thrifted in Florida. Have you, have you been there before? A lot of the times, you know, being on this side of the camera when I'm thrifting and you guys see price tags, you'll say stuff like, wow, um, you know, you, your, your costs there are much lower than what I pay here. And so I always find it interesting when I get out and about to just go see for myself, like what are other people paying for used stuff in their area, right? So where you're watching from right now, hey Debbie, hey Felicia, Felicia's in Florida. I am so jealous of where you live right now. I'll trade you snow for some sunshine. But, um, you know, where you live, do you think that you pay, we look at what I, you know, typically buy things for up here, but do you think that you live in a place where maybe things are higher priced for what you buy for you, secondhand furniture and decor? So the places I went to, um, the second place, and you'll see that on the vlog tomorrow because I filmed it as I went. So I'll put it up as a vlog tomorrow and show you some extra stuff I found. It got higher. <laughs> like, I was shocked when I looked, and you'll see it on my footage tomorrow. I was shocked when I came across a table set that was $500. I'm like, oh my gosh, you know? Uh, so that really made me open my eyes. And that is why that if you are flipping for profit, that you should always be mindful of, don't price what somebody else prices it for because we all live in different areas and we all have different markets. And what I pay for something and what you pay for something might be completely different and so far apart. So at the end of the day, always price stuff for what you feel happy receiving for it. You know, if you're pricing um, so low that you feel bitter about painting stuff and then selling it for, you know, a fraction of what you think you should get, then you know what? You got to raise your prices, right? So do what's best for you. And that's why I say in business as well, that you got to do what's best for your business of how you want to grow because we all live differently. We all, you know, we all have just different ways, different things that we do in life that makes us happy, right? So don't look at what somebody else got going on, whether it's in business, what they'll pay for something, what they'll sell something for. You just got to do what's best for you, right? Oh, it was nice, Terry. I did get a little bit of sun. I burned very easily, but we took a walk on St. Augustine Beach. I also learned that St. Augustine, Florida and St. Augustine Beach are actually two different places. Like they're their own little entities. So we drove over across the bridge. We stayed downtown. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Stayed downtown in the, in the downtown district shops. 
oh my gosh, all, all kinds of stuff right there. And then um, we took the day, we took the bridge across the St. Augustine Beach, and that is where you saw that gorgeous beach. It's very, very wide. A lot of you guys commented and said, holy smokes, that beach is so wide. And we walked. There was one guy in the water, probably one crazy guy in the water, and uh, lots of people, lots of kids running around, you know, getting their feet wet and stuff like that. Best shells on that beach. Oh my goodness, it was amazing. I just loved it. The birds were out and uh, just so different, right? I kept saying to myself, saying to myself, is this really Feb February in another place? Because February where I grew up and where I live now is cold. It's not beach weather, right? I was talking to mom and dad last night and we said the dreaded P word, the polar bear word, because where I'm from up north, a little bit later in the season is when you potentially see polar bears come across on the ice pans and then it's a very real thing that you have to be careful that there could be polar bears, you know? So don't leave your garbage outside of your door and stuff like that, that you just have to be mindful of, right? And so I just think to myself, I was having the dreaded P polar bear uh, conversation with mom and dad last night back in Canada, back in Newfoundland, and I was driving from Florida. <laughs> opposite worlds, right? So I'm gonna share with you guys today a few of the finds that I got. I know, they're big, big, giant, giant creatures. Um, so the first place I went to, you already saw that on this vlog up here. So this is the stuff that I took home for that place. You know what, let me see, what can I start with? Let me show you. So I did take home these candle holders. <laughs> Say it with me. You can never have too many candle holders, right? So Matt actually liked these as well. And when he saw them, he's like, look at these. Do you see how heavy they are? These things, and this is where I said in the vlog that somebody definitely pay, paid more than $6. Um, I'm sorry, more than $8 for these. These are like really, really like, this is a weapon, okay? All right, <laughs> this is heavy duty. And I thought they were beautiful. So do you, get, you guys think I should leave them as is? You can kind of see my house behind me. We have lots of dark walls. It's a very old house. So, I mean, I could go, and I like a nice dark, I, that's just me. I go to the, I got to the dark shabby, shabby side, right? I thought they were beautiful. They are so heavy. Holy moly, you wouldn't think it, but yeah. I don't know how much they paid for these. So I got the pair, and I thought they'd be so pretty with the uh, tapered candles in there. You have problems with chipmunks, Kathy. You must be out in the woods, are you? Out in the countryside. So what do you guys think of these? These were small enough to take home with me. I love them. I saw lots of furniture that I really liked, like little stands that could have potentially fit in the trunk of the car, but um, like I'm not going to pay $60 for a little stand, right? Like I might sell a stand at 60, but I'm not going to buy it. So for me, I tend to buy in the wheelhouse of free up to maybe $20, $25. And that's how I built my business, right? Just taking small things like that because you learn that furniture is a dime a dozen. You can put feelers out so that you, you're not held captive to having to buy just off marketplace or something like that, right? If you tell your friends what you're doing, they'll spread the word for you. Um, you can ask them to spread the word for you, right? You can put feelers out, like spring is coming up right now. If you, if you post it, I have learned this, if you post it on your Facebook page and said to your friends, like a personal profile and said, hey, anybody getting rid of any furniture this spring, I'll come haul it away for you for free. There are people out there, I mean, there are people that make businesses out of picking up other people's junk for free and hauling it away, right? So why wouldn't you think? Because you see the vision in something, but to somebody else, they just want it out of the way. And so don't overpay for stuff. Know that it is a dime a dozen. Uh, there's so much furniture. And if you're using Junk Monkey, you know it sticks to pretty much anything under the sun. So for me, I don't feel like I'm held captive to whether or not it's made of solid wood or not. At the end of the day, you know, if it's, in, it's, if it's got good bones, and it's a good price and it's gonna fit the spot that I want, I can jazz it up on the end and make it look any way I want, right? And I, I don't have to worry what it's made of. That can be totally, totally your call, but don't feel like you always have to, you know, get a certain kind, right? The opportunities are endless. So I also got this little box. You, you saw this in the vlog as well. Look at it right there. Oh, I am staying warm. I'm inside today. It was hard to put back on the winter jacket though. Coming home last night. Now, if you drive, it's amazing because you can really see how the landscape changes. You really appreciate how weather changes. It was interesting, you know, even on the drive down, you know that storm that came through? We got out of uh, Titusville up here by Lake Erie before it hit, like within hours of when it was going to hit. And we thought, if we don't get out now, we'll get stuck and we'll never get away for the weekend. 
And it's amazing when you do a drive. Have you guys ever done any like long distance driving across the country, multiple states, where you really see how it's different? You appreciate it, right? You can jump on a plane and you can get there within like three hours or whatever. But you, when you drive, you see a different, I don't know, you see the people, you hear the accents. For me, you know, being from Canada, uh, I, I can really see the accents, uh, you know, it's, you know, when you're not from this country and you hear other people talk, or even if you're not from a certain state, there's pockets, right? There's accents, there's cultures, there's like little dialects. And so it's always interesting that when you do long distance driving, you stop at a gas station and you can really hear it, right? You can hear different accents. You learn different accents. It's awesome. Uh, when we went down on Thursday night, so we beat the storm out of here. But as we were listening to the news and traveling, like the storm hit all the places on the East Coast differently. So you'd hear, uh, for example, in South Carolina about how, um, you know, there was there, there was tornadoes. I don't know if any hit down, but it was tornado warning. And also tell me if you were in South Carolina and what you experienced. Lots of wind, holy moly wind. And uh, there was a ton of flooding. And so, you know, you hear that on the news and you don't live in that state. But then as you're traveling through the states, and you're hearing about you know how this state was affected compared to this state and then you're driving through it and you're like yep yep absolutely so much flooding going on here right so we worked our way down so that was awesome just to get to see that and then the weather change so the sunshine down there like i said up here <laughs> you might get sunshine but you get lots of snow with it all right so this was a box that uh matt actually was like look at this this is cool too i'm like yeah i like that i like that so five bucks, I took home this treasure box. I checked for pirate coins. It was in Florida after all. There was nothing down there. So I'm just gonna clean it up. I do like finding pieces that I can easy, easily clean. The grapes, you know, I smell almost like, when I first picked this up, I thought, did somebody store crayons inside of there? You can kind of like see that. But now, honestly, that I'm home and I can smell things that smell different from my, my home, you know what somebody used this for? They use it for their tart warmer, I can tell. This is where they kept their tart warmers because it smells like cinnamon wax. Do you know what I mean? So, good idea. <laughs> Lots of wind, Sherry says down there. It was very spooky. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. We stopped at South Carolina at the visitor center and our car was like shaking with the wind. Yeah, it was major intense wind. So I'm thinking what I'm going to do, I ain't going to keep the grapes on it, right? Look at the bones of it. It's awesome. It's also missing what was like a little latch right here on the front, but I don't really care about that. I'm going to go ahead and maybe paint the interior section. I might keep this as is. I might paint over it. I don't know. Like I could paint this, for example, you know, with a mouse in a house and then glaze over the stripping on the side. But I think it'll be a really cool storage box. You can put anything you want. I like the idea of putting my tart warmers in there. But for five bucks, I thought this would be a really cool thing to bring home as a thrift find souvenir. That's the other thing. When you decorate your house with stuff like that, like I will always remember that I got this. And as I was checking out as well, I saw this in another section. I'm like, there's the other part that goes with it. So I decided to get the super size box as well. What would you guys store into it? I mean, you can put anything, remotes, whatever. Do you have one and what do you guys uh, use yours for? But when you do thrift and junk, isn't it cool how you can look around your house and go, I remember where I got that or who was with me or where I was, right? So it's memories attached to it. It's awesome. And I'm seeing a lot of stories come out now trending saying that a lot of the home decorations coming up is not going to be focused just on one kind, but it's going to be more eclectic and it's going to be more new and old put together, right? Well, for a lot of us junkers and thrifters, we're like, you know what? I've been doing this forever. It's nice that the style finally catches up with me because I do like, like you, a little bit of old and new, right? Yep. Stories to our treasures. It's awesome. Just the, um, to get out and to hunt and thrift and I don't know, you know, the experience and if whether you walk away empty handed or not was still fun. You still had conversation. Maybe you talked about how, how much or, you know, too expensive something was, but you still had some good conversation and it doesn't cost anything, right? Up to you if you take anything home. Kim says, Spokane to Chicago and back a different route. Did you, you mean you traveled there? Is that what you mean? I might have missed your earlier comment. So that tells me that you're probably a um, traveler too. 
nothing for us just to make a last minute, you know, call. Just gonna be careful when you're on the roads because, you know, you think that you have to worry just about you. You know, I've got new tires, everything is good. I'll watch my driving, but you have to watch out for everybody else's driving because there's some crazy people out there. <laughs> crazy people out there. You know, you gotta be careful. Oh, Paris Gray and Silver Pete. That goes so nice, uh, Trudy. That's a beautiful combination together. Terry says, just painting my old spare bedroom now. And yes, exactly. It's now it's gonna look completely new, right? I think it's awesome. You know, there are things that you buy new and there's things that you buy old and the combination thereof makes your space look completely yours, right? Your spin on it, completely custom. Nobody will have the same space as you because you've got one of a kind pieces that you brought together to, you know, really curate it and put it together. And you can save so much money. Kim says her favorite is a silver pea. Everybody loves a silver pea. It's got this really pretty um, pearl silver uh, layer of protection, right? Mary Ellen says, lots of memories when I hang my Christmas tree ornaments. That is, that's a classic example. Shaylin drove from Northern New York to Denver for vacation. Ooh, yes, nice. Yes, the metallic, the, uh, you're talking about the champagne one? He's coming back. That was the very first one that we did, and then the new one is the silver, and everybody's been loving on it. And stay tuned, because there's more stuff coming as well. More uh, good stuff coming. Uh, let's see here, what have I got in here? Oh yeah, this was the brochure. So this tells me that when I purchased from this little thrift store when I was down there, you know, what my money was going to support. That's the other wonderful thing, is that you're, you know, you're adding to your home, but you're also contributing. This place, um, Alpha Omega, they said that they contribute to, or their mission is to provide shelter, support, hope for women and children. And, um, oh my gosh, the staff there were so friendly, so awesome. And it's nice too when you go to um, a place that you're not from, when people take the time to talk to you, right? Because you have no conversation other than the person that you're with and they might be tired of you talking to them. So it's nice when you actually get to uh, meet local people that will share with you. I always try to think about that. Mary says, I bought a mid-century chest of drawers. Did you really? What a score. Cindy says her parents have a tag sale business, so that's where you get a lot of your goodies for cheap. I am so jealous. <laughs> All right, so then I decided to take home this, uh, this, ta this tag, this piece as well. It still has the tag onto it. It says, this product was handcrafted. It is a made in India piece. And you can tell by the weight of it that it was one of those expensive frames. Not the cheap Walmart frames, you know what I'm talking about. This is the actual like heavy wooden and it must have this hand stamped, I don't know, metal on the front of it. I thought it was beautiful. Handcrafted by artisans in India. Yeah, love it. Five by seven. So I thought maybe I'd take a picture when I was down in Florida and put it in here because it is nice to um, have pictures, right? We never take the time anymore to print pictures anymore. They're on our phones. Anybody else feel like you're always saying to yourself, I got to print my pictures and then you forget you have good pictures on there. They never see the light of day. And I, I tried to tell myself too that don't get caught up in always taking the photos and taking the video because remember, you know, life is happening on the other side of the lens. So enjoy it for yourself and take it all in. Terry says, oh no, I print mine. You, you're a good example to the rest of us. I have many scrapbook albums. Anybody else very big in the scrapbooking? Um, just putting together scrapbooks of all kinds of pictures. Nice. Kim says, I don't know how to get, get them off my phone. You know, I've done this many times and it works really nice. If you go to Walmart, they have those kiosks that are there. I think they're green and white up in the photo section. I forget what they're called. It's a green and white app and it'll tell you what to download. You download the app. You sit there with your phone, okay, in front of the device. You open your app. It'll say, go ahead and tell us the pin number that's coming up on the screen. A pin number comes up. It attaches to your phone. Your photos are like sent through like an airdrop. They're there, you can edit them, you can do retouch them, anything you want, and then you print them, and they come out within, honestly, like a half an hour or so, and it's so awesome. Polly has a scrapbook crafting room, nice. Papers are fun, like pens, papers, all that good stuff. Chris says, yep, Walgreens, CVS has them also. Also, I've never been there for their photos, but that makes sense, yeah. 
So there you go. It, it feels good to get some photos off your phone. Otherwise, it just clogs your phone up. I have a ton of on my phone that I'm always trying to get off of them. Kay says she's here from a very rainy Alabama under a flood warning. Oh my gosh. Terry, really? Terry says that Walmart has a site that you can do it from home and have them mailed to you. That sounds like the old days of when you go and you drop off your film at the, you know, for me growing up, it was always at the local store that was, it was called Shoppers Drug Mart for those of you who are back in Canada. And you would go and you'd uh, drop off your rolls of film or whatever, and then you wait for them to get the call that your pictures are in. <laughs> Tony says, I have a craft room over my garage. Very nice. Uh, that's awesome. Snowing in Oklahoma. Yeah, it's snowing here too. Lots of ice. Last night coming home, the plow ahead of us had it, had his, um, you know, he had put the plow blade down and he was cleaning out the roads. Did a nice job. There were sparks flying. He was cleaning the road good though. Shaylin loves making photo books with her photos. Oh, that's a good idea. Yes, that's a good idea. Um, when I first married Matt, his family gave me a lot of pictures, um, like in a box of just the old photos that his mom had collected over the years. And I still have it. I done one for Riley and I did one for Matt. Put together like all the baby photos. And um, it's just really cool to have, to hang on to. And there's nothing better than opening up an old photo book, something like that, especially if you scrapbook, because you probably have little things tucked in there with it or words about it and it's a trip down memory lane, right? I think about all the photos that are stuck on my old phones that I've never taken off that I really need to because, you know, you look at stuff and, you know, your brain is amazing because we only remember some stuff, right? Maybe that's a good healing device that there are things that we just let go, we purge in our brain. It would be crazy if we remembered it all, but it would be nice to be able to print them and just look back on them, right? Thank you for the love. I appreciate you being here and for hanging out with us. Just got back from Florida if you're just joining us and I'm packing the car and I'm pretty sure these things weighed a ton. We probably burnt extra gas trying to get this set home. <laughs> uh, oh, it has a story behind it. Mary says, Kay, what part of Alabama? Nice. So this was the other frame that I got as well. And I think I ended up paying oh, $3 for this one. It's still stuck on there. It's a really heavy one again. I know that if I want to dry brush it and put some color on it, I can. Kind of reminds me of part of the sand when I was at Florida where the water washed out and it was all like part of the sand was shriveled where the water line was. That's really cool like that. So these are my Florida finds, which I'm going to have to print off, but I think it will be cool. And on the heels of what we talked about where now it's becoming really in style, which we knew all along, you know, but um, to kind of put intermingle a whole bunch of different patterns and new and old. It is a cool frame, right? So I'll put that in my living room. I love it very, very much. I got some color in Florida. Oh, I started to tell you that when I walked down the beach, by the time I got to the end, the, the sun started feeling really, really hot and I started to climatize to the heat. And it was so nice because I took off down to uh, just my tank top and oh, my son was like, my skin was like, what is this? What is this? We haven't seen this in months, right? I do love summertime. I feel like I get a good tan in the summer. How about you guys? Do you feel like you look healthier when you get a tan? Kay says, I live in Somerville, uh, Alabama, the flooding, oh yeah. It was a big storm, it stretched really, really far. Like up north, my parents, they got a lot of snow all the way down to here. There was a lot of snow and ice. And then um, it seemed like the storm just was, in the southern parts, it seems like it was wind and rain. Yeah. So that's what I got at the, oh, you know what? Let's do this too. Let's do this. Melissa might be on here. I don't know. So when I came back from Florida this morning at 2.30 a.m., there was something on my steps, all right? And it had come from Florida. So it followed me here from Florida, this box here, and it came in from Melissa Limbaugh. Melissa, if you're here watching, I'm excited to open this up because I, I had no idea it was coming. I have no idea what she was going to send to me. I, I do. I feel like I get, I feel healthier when I get sunshine. I could totally be a snake. <laughs> Just son of myself. So let's see what Melissa sent in. She did a really nice pack job on this. I always say if we could hand deliver our paint across the country, we would um, because you never know what packages go through. But I gotta tell you, Melissa, because this feels glass perhaps, and uh, she did a really nice job. 
I'm somebody who likes to recycle all of my, uh, my packing stuff. All right, it smells really nice. What the heck is this? All right, let's see here. A surprise from Florida. Melissa, I wonder how close you were. What is this? I wonder how close you were to where we were down in St. Augustine. Who's on here from Florida? Oh, this is the back. This is the front. All right, shall we look at it together? Oh my gosh. Can you guys see that? Maybe I need something to put on the back of it so you can really see through it. This is a creation by Melissa. She signed it on the back for me, which I love. And it looks like a frame, maybe an upcycled frame. And this is, let me put this over the back so you can see. Look at this. What is this even done with? That's amazing. It's like it's, is this an epoxy pour? I have no idea. It's like the wording is inside of the glass. Like they look like beautiful, um, like vinyl, but the vinyl is under a layer of this gorgeous glossy. Love it. So we got, oh, this is Miss Petunia right here, I'm sure. And this is pickles. <laughs> Go bananas. I am going to put this in my studio because I think it is awesome and it is fun and it brings me joy just to look at it. I love it. Thank you so much, Melissa. You'll probably see this in the background. Aw, oh, Roshana says, so adorable. This is so thoughtful of her, isn't it? You guys are so sweet when you send me stuff. You really don't have to do it. You always send beautiful stuff and it always makes me smile. And I'm honestly thinking that this was probably done in Teal River and it looks like there's a black glaze over the top of it. Isn't that sweet? Oh, I love it. When I was younger, I used to collect stickers. That's what these remind me of. Like they look, they're like so healthy. Anybody collect the puffy stickers? This is, this is not made with, this is, these are not stickers though. These are like, like, this is like, I don't even know. It must be under epoxy. Cause some of it is sticking out and feels 3D and some of it is inside. Oh my gosh. Love it, love it, love it, love it. All right. I'm gonna have to uh, hang that on my wall tomorrow. Thank you very, very much. Oh, I started to say, say though, the collector of me used to collect snicker, stickers, Snickers. That's not a bad collection either. But um, used to collect stickers, and I love the puffy stickers. You could get more for the puffy stickers. Did anybody else do that? Like if you had a friend that had regular stickers and yours had like the puffy face ones or something, you could always be like, you know, no, I want three of yours for one of my good ones. <laughs> So when mom and dad would travel over the road or go somewhere, you know, bring me back some stickers that nobody has in my area. So that way they become more valuable. Hi, Suzanne. Suzanne's here from Florida. I am so jealous. So jealous. But you know what? It makes, it will really make me appreciate it when I go back to Florida and I'll be back again. We got to do a meetup. Maybe I'll get to go for a longer period of time and be able to, um, you know, do something where we could actually do a meetup and you guys have time if you want to come and we could find a place where we're traveling to. Like now, since I've been down to St. Augustine and I know the lay of the land, I feel like I could like, okay, the next time I could go back there, now I know what I can do, right? Like I know, know that area and we could do something like that. Hello, Paula. Thank you for being here. Suzanne says, yes, she's, are you further south? I guess you would be, huh? Further south. We want to come down to the Florida Keys and check out that area too. I think that would be fun. Matt tells me there's lots of bridges. Never been there before. That would be cool. And I'll vlog it and take you guys with me. All right. So I'm going to pop off of here and I'm going to jump over on my second YouTube channel. Do you know I have one? It's called Grow with Sonia Miller as in G-R-O-W. This one is for um, like business minded, creative souls like myself. And so every morning I go there live, drink coffee and hang out with you guys at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. But this morning, because I got back at 2.30 in the morning, I'm like, okay, I'll pop on later today, right? So I'm gonna do that if you wanna pop over there. And that's if you're into the world of growing a creative business. I have heard of that island before, but I have never been there. That's gonna be, have to be something uh, for me to check out. Uh, I love going to new places. And I like going play to places too that Matt's never been to because if you go to a place that your spouse has never been to and you go there together, it's like you get to experience it together, right? 
Carol's on here. Hello, my friend. She says, finally caught the end of the live. Uh, well, I'm glad that you're here. Hopefully you're warm wherever you are. You're welcome. So I found some other stuff and I'll share with you probably tomorrow on the vlog what I found. But And you'll also see the prices that I ran into. Like I said, I was like, whoa, okay. Saw some nice pieces, but for me, um, they were a little out of my price point. Like I said, table sets for $500, that was a little much. When I go to my local Goodwill and I see them for $100, I'm like, whoa, who's pricing this stuff today? But everything is different in whatever area area you are in, right? So you have to kind of, you know, I, if I lived in those areas, I would have to get more creative with where I find my stuff. I would thrift, obviously, because that's fun. Take home the pieces that fall within my budget, but I would also be putting out shout outs and, um, you know, trying some other avenues to get furniture directly from people versus going through a middleman because, um, yeah, I just have a certain price point, right? Sharon, I would love to come to Miami. And I think that that will be one of the areas that we will be traveling through possibly if we continue to go uh, and check out all around the uh, Florida coastline. I want to see it all. All right, so I'm going to pop off. I'm going to jump over on the other YouTube channel. If you want to come hang out for a little bit, if you type in grow with Sonia with an I Miller, you'll find me over there. And that's where I'm over there every single day as well. But like I'll be on there again tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So tonight is a special one because I was asleep this morning. I woke up this morning. And I still felt like I was driving. Do you know when you, um, I don't know, when you drive a long time or you just do a lot and you stay up way past like you actually need sleep? And then you feel like you're dizzy and you feel like you're still moving. That was me earlier today. <laughs> now I'm on the other side of it. So I'm feeling like I'm settling back home here. But um, yeah, getting my feet back underneath me, right? I mean, it's like a 15 hour drive, that alone. So yeah, 30 hours in the last, that's not including the driving time even being down there, but 30 hours since Thursday night, that's a lot of time to be in a car, right? Matt's probably happy to be out of the car with me. <laughs> Okay, glad to be back watching you. Yay! All right, well, I am too. Thanks for joining me tonight. I'm gonna pop over there. So if you are a creative, business-minded soul, come over for some conversation and uh, hang out with us over there as well. Just all the all the creative people who, um, you know, you junk and you thrift, but maybe you do it for profit, right? Or you wanna grow your own business, or like me, you wanna leave the corporate world behind you and you wanna learn how you can focus on growing um, a business that's a creative business, right? And doing that for yourself. So I'm so thankful, so happy and happy to share it with other people as well. Everything that I've learned. All right. I will see you over there momentarily. Take care of my friends. I'll see you back on this channel again tomorrow, of course, with more thrift finds. See ya. Bye.